Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming and I hope you're all having a wonderful move of 2021 so far. So I want to begin just by giving a quick primer on what our clinical motivation is. So diabetic retinopathy is a disease of the eye and its progression is characterised by the formation of lesions in the retina. And doctors will use retinal fundus photographs which look a bit like this and are relatively easy to obtain to diagnose the severity um, of diabetic retinopathy based on the type and quantity of these lesions which look a bit like this. But as you might imagine, this is a rather error-prone and time-consuming process, and so for this reason, automated methods that utilise machine learning have become a really popular topic of research. And when we say automated techniques, there are basically two main tasks in automated DR diagnosis. First of all, there's classification, which is assigning the severity grade, and segmentation, and that's highlighting the lesions on the image on the pixel level. And as more sophisticated and more powerful methods are developed, we come closer to the goal of accessible screening, for all susceptible individuals. However, as you all know, training robust machine learning models requires an abundance of manually annotated data, which is simply not available. So we're looking for a way to generate synthetic data, i.e. retinal fundus images, with accompanying severity labels for that classification problem and semantic labels for the segmentation problem, with, with the hope that we can inflate our training data using these and therefore increase performance on downstream tasks. And the way we're going to do this is actually in two steps. First of all, we're going to generate semantic labels conditioned on our desired severity. And from this, we want to synthesize our realistic retinal fundus images based on the semantic labels. So for this first part, semantic label generation, our initial experiments involved applying sort of existing GAN architectures uh, to this problem. But what we quickly found is that these GANs have been designed for natural, dense RGB images. And so the main issue that we faced was that the large number of channels, together with the very sparse labels, um, made the discriminator extremely prone to collapsing. So the way we ended up approaching this was using an AC GAN to generate class-conditioned semantic labels at a resolution of 256 by 256, which were then upsampled to 512 by 512. So this is sort of um, the general architecture of the AC GAN generator. Uh, and we can see here that we actually use a softmax function in the final layer in order to yield a probability distribution of each pixel belonging to a particular class. Whereas in a conventional GAN, you might see a tan H or, or sigmoid at the end. And then to yield the semantic label itself, we can just take the argmax of this. And in the discriminator, we also use an auxiliary classifier to predict the severity of the input semantic labels. And this is in order to aid conditioning. So to counter the discriminator collapse that we saw earlier, uh, we actually heavily imbalance training in terms of learning rate, in terms of network capacity, uh, and with the use of adaptive discriminator augmentation, in which kind of uh, goggles are applied to the discriminator. And you can see here sort of the result of this network. And uh, so in this in this sample, each column represents a DR severity grade from zero to four. And you can see that the conditioning has worked relatively well, with lesions being more prominent in the higher DR grades. And then from these, we actually pass these to the SPADE image-to-image -image translation network in order to synthesize realistic retinal fundus images from these semantic labels. And so this is the result of applying that network to those generated semantic labels from earlier. And we found that supplying instance maps in particular was really important in creating sharp boundaries of the optic disk. Uh, now, so, but before we move on to the results, I actually want to take a step back and, and discuss the data. And the reason I wanted to highlight this is because generative models basically learn distributions. And so if your data set is biased, then they will inherit that bias. And they might not learn what you think they learn. For example, why you think your model is learning how to generate different grades of retinal fundus images, it might actually just be learning to replicate annotated biases in your data. And while this is not a major focus of this paper, it still represents why I think that a solid understanding of your input data is really useful because it exposes things like this. So it's worth noting that this paper actually presented some preliminary results of my master's thesis, which I guess you can read if you're so inclined. Um, so in this work, we actually only generated hard exudates and evaluated the effect on segmentation performance. But later on, we actually studied the effect on classification performance, uh, as well as extending generation to more lesions and experimenting with more techniques. But even at this early stage, we we're getting very promising results. And our evaluation approach basically involved mixing real and synthetic data uh, and training models on these. 
and studying how performance on downstream tasks varied with the proportion of synthetic data in the training set. So how do we do? Well, the bar on the left here uh, was trained on entirely real data and X as our baseline. And we found that the models trained on 25% and 50% synthetic data yielded a small improvement over the baseline. But at 75% we actually observed a drop in performance, possibly due to the network overfitting the features only present in the synthetic data. And what I think this shows is that the use of synthetic data to improve the performance of segmentation models is viable. Now, I know all, that was all pretty rapid fire, um, but I think I'm out of time, so thanks so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference.